Madam Chair, what I'm going to do now is I'll read to you the stipulation that the parties have agreed to. I'll read it to you now, and then most likely I'll read it to you again just before uh, council does do their closing arguments. Okay. So listen, listen carefully. These are stipulations that the parties have agreed to. You can consider them the uh, stipulations as evidence. <coughs> uh, the prosecution and defense in the, in the consolidated cases agree that the following facts are true. The stipulation is evidence. You, the jury, must accept the facts as true. Thus, it has been, a stip it has been stipulated that, one, on or about October 19, 2011, the defendants uh, before you were in Veterans Park. At the time, at the, at the time that the above defendants were in the park, the park was closed. Print it closes from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Closed print, and they were each personally given orders to leave the park by Manchester police officers, officers Morgan Lovejoy, officer Alan Alan Aldenberg, officer, officer Jonathan Acara, officer Robert McGowan, and officer David Wood. After being given orders to leave Veterans Park, these defendants remained in the park in defiance of the orders to leave knowing that they were not licensed or privileged to enter or remain there. Now those are the stipulations that the parties have agreed to as facts, and thus you should accept them as true. All set? Yes, Your Honor. State's going to call Captain Cunha to the stand. Captain Cunha, you may raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this trial is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Please have a seat. Could you please introduce yourself to the jury and spell your last name? Yes, my name is Robert Cunha, C-U-N-H-A. How are you employed? I'm a police captain with the City of Manchester Police Department. How long have you been with the Manchester Police Department? I've been with Manchester Police since 1994. And what are your duties and responsibilities as a captain at the Manchester Police Department? I'm the captain in charge of the legal division and Office of Professional Standards. I oversee uh, the records unit, uh, arraignment prosecutors, juvenile prosecutor, ordinance violations bureau, uh, sex offender compliance unit. Um, in, additional, in addition, uh, as professional standards captain, I oversee uh, the internal affairs process, if you will, uh, handling citizen complaints, uh, concerns, uh, things of that nature. Did you receive any training to become a police officer? Yes. Can you explain that to the jury? I've been to two different uh, law enforcement training academies. Uh, in the um, spring of 89, I was a police officer in another place prior in the town of Pelham uh, since 88. So in the spring of 89, I attended the New Hampshire Police Academy. And then uh, January of 2010, I attended the FBI National Academy of Quantico, Virginia. And then throughout my career, uh, my 25th year, I've had a number of in-service trainings, uh, seminars, and, and uh, professional uh, type correspondence uh, to, to boost my training. Are you a certified police officer in the state of New Hampshire then? Yes, I am. In turning your attention to October 19th, 2011, were you working on that day? I was. Can you explain to the jury what shift you were working? I, I worked, uh, that day I was working um, my normal shift. I worked Monday through Friday during the daytime, um, but I was also, um, I worked later into the evening on, on that day as well. And why was that? Um, I was the point person for the police department, um, uh, designated so by Chief Mara to uh, deal with the Occupy protests. So were you at Veterans Park on October 19, 2011? I, I was. And um, what city is, is Veterans Park in? It's in the city of Manchester. Is that Hillsborough County? It is. And it's actually right behind this courthouse, correct? That is correct, yes. And will you please tell the jury, are there any restrictions at the parks in Manchester? Yes, there are. Can you explain what those are? Um, there's different restrictions. Um, there's, there's a restriction uh, relative to the park being closed from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. There's restrictions that pertain to um, alcohol consumption in the park, gambling, uh, playing golf, uh, pitching uh, tents for overnight uh, accommodations to stay in the park. Uh, there's a variety of uh, regulations uh, that pertains to the park, boisterous behavior. So people aren't allowed to camp in the park? No, they're not. And is this a restriction set by Manchester Police Department? No, it's, it's established by city ordinance. Now, 
Are these ordinances enforced by the Manchester Police Department? Yes, they are. And why are they enforced by the Police Department? We enforce the state laws and local ordinances. It's our responsibility to do so. Does the police, do, does your police department have any concerns with uh, the park during the day? Yes, we have a number of issues that occur in the park. Can you explain those a little? Parks, plural parks. Can you explain what those issues are that you have during the parks during the day? This is, there's a wide gamut of issues. Um, uh, alcohol consumption is, is a significant problem in the parks. Um, we have problems with vandalism, littering. We have um, crimes of um, decency. Some violent crimes, property crimes, it really covers a, a wide array of, of issues that we have with the parks. And what about at night? At night, the same. Um, it, 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 we have problems uh, different different parts of the day in the parks. Is it harder to enforce that during night, during the nighttime? It can be. It, it, when you at night, it's obviously darker, um, so. Uh, level of concern, especially when you're talking about someone who may want to perpetrate a crime of violence against someone. At night, it's obviously harder to see, see what's going on in the park. Um, when you're talking about nighttime too, downtown, you've got a lot of bars, bar patrons sometimes um, don't, don't behave themselves when they come out after they've been consuming alcohol and um, either create problems amongst themselves or amongst other people that you know, uh, really you know, don't deserve to be confronted necessarily by people. Um, so at night, the, 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 ele the elevation of concern um, does go up. Now, what was going on in Veterans Park on October 19, 2011? There was the, the Occupy protest was um, established in a camp in the park. Now, were you able to tell if all the people in the park were actually associated with the Occupy movement itself? That's a difficult question for me to answer because um, Occupy, from what I understand of it, to be any type of expert occupied, but what I know of it um, was all inclusive. They, they really weren't, from my understanding, supporting anybody. So I saw people that maybe I didn't know if they were part of Occupy, but again, just because you're maybe affiliated with another group or, or someone that the police probably may be familiar with didn't necessarily mean that you weren't also part of Occupy. I, I don't know that they you know, carry membership cards or, or have applications or anything like that. I think it's, it's an all inclusive, all inviting type set up so it's, it's kind of a difficult question to answer and can you please tell the jury uh, what you did around 9 p.m. yes I, um, I was with Sergeant Boucher and um, we'd actually gone to, to, to get a cup of coffee and we were coming back and I saw that um, on the uh, west side of the park just outside the park by the by the Elm Street side um, there was an assembly and um, took an opportunity, I took an opportunity to go and address the group. Uh, Sergeant Boucher came with me, um, and I went and spoke to the group that was there, and they allowed me to speak at the, the assembly. Now, were you in uniform at the time? Um, I Never. was, as far as my official MPD uniform, no, I was wearing um, uh, tan, like tactical pants. Um, my, my jacket was actually a uh, National Academy, FBI National Academy pullover. Um, it was kind of, uh, some level of spontaneity there. I would have preferred to have been in my department jacket, but um, again, I, I wanted to, to grab an opportunity, and so I was wearing um, like a, a big set of green pullover NA National Academy of the National Academy seal on the left breast. Now, how many people would you estimate were in the park around 9 o'clock when you and Sergeant Boucher went there? Well, when I, when I went there, um, there was, my recollection was only really one person at 9 o'clock that was actually in the park. He was watching the supply tent. Um, the rest were assembled more towards the sidewalk, um, just outside at the mouth of the, the main entrance of the park. And how many would you estimate that there were right there? Somewhere in the vicinity of uh, uh, 25 to 30 people. And you mentioned uh, a tent. Were there tents in the park? When I, there was the supply tent that I remember in the park. I remember I remembered seeing during the time of veterans the tents. Um, that one I specifically remember because I had a conversation with the gentleman. Um, my recollection was where all the tents in the park, but as far as the specifics on them, I'm a little, I'm a little hazy on. And um, what did you tell the people when you stopped around 9 p.m.? Like, what was your point in stopping and speaking with the people that were there? Well, we had had a very positive relationship with, uh, with Occupy, and I know 
was trying to do um, in anticipation of an enforcement action coming was to try to just build a little further upon that relationship. Um, these folks had demonstrated to us that they were willing to communicate, they were willing to negotiate. They had moved out of Veterans Park uh, temporarily to accommodate the foot race for the fallen, which is um, raises money for the police athletically, for inner city kids participate in sports. And when they did that, it demonstrated to me that these people, uh, they, they will listen. You know, they may not necessarily do everything you want, but they will listen to you, and, 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 and likewise, we would listen to them. So I was trying to build upon what had been established, and uh, again, anticipation of an enforcement action forthcoming. And um, when I spoke to the group, I just basically stressed to them um, that I respected them, and I respected the way they had conducted themselves and their principles. And um, if an enforcement action did have to happen, my hope was that we could get them to vacate the park without a single person being cited uh, or arrested. Um, I explained to them that if we did have to cite them, it would be a city ordinance with a penalty of $50. And I was hoping that it would end with that and that it wouldn't go any further. I talked about some of the issues, um, that I, some things that I was concerned about if, if someone declines to you know, identify themselves or giving them a summons we don't know who to give the summons to, that it puts us in a situation where we have to affect an arrest. I talked the same about if someone were to be arrested and they didn't cooperate with the booking process, same problem. You can't bail somebody if you don't know who they are, because you don't know who to hold answerable to come to court. So um, I, I talked a little bit about that and, and just, you know, just really reiterated um, the, um, the, the respect that I had for these, for these individuals and the way they uh, had conducted themselves. And so would you characterize it more of as like a heads up, like, hey, if we come back, these are your options? Yeah, that's right. Okay, at some point we come back, um, you know, my hope is I don't have to take a single enforcement action, but um, if we do, this is kind of how it's going to play out. Now, after speaking at the, with the group around 9 p.m., did you end up speaking with them again? Yes. And approximately what time was that? It was just after 11 p.m. And how many people would you estimate were there around that time? There had to be more people that, that were there. Approximately 50 to 60 people. And um, did you speak with them at that time? Yes. And where where did that where did that um, speech go on? Like where did you talk with them at that point in the park? They were um, they were not where they were before. They were inside the park, um, further uh, east, if you will. Uh, I guess kind of further northeast, if you will. Um, Was there like a, a big light there? Yeah, the big like light, light. Yeah, the big light. There's the tree. Monument, the tall monuments over to your left, the World War II monument is, is behind them at an angle. Now, at, at that point, what were you, now you said this was a little after 11? Correct. And so at this point, what, what is your goal? Like, what are you going there to do? To, to clear the park. And so what do you, what do you tell everybody? Um, they, uh, when I walked up, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Arnie Albert was addressing the group was telling them the importance of sticking to their principles of nonviolence. Um, and so I, you know, my, my intent was to tell them to vacate the park. When I heard that, that was very comforting to me. I was very appreciative. Um, and, and again, just tried to, to build off of, of what we had going here. Um, I, tried to, I tried to basically um, show them uh, uh, respect um, by way of a gesture. Uh, they I had learned some things interactions with Occupy, um, some different um, points of order type of uh, uh, or, uh, way to be recognized during meetings and assemblies. Uh, they, they would make a, a hand gesture for a point of information similar to this, and I picked up on that. I picked up on some other hand gestures where they agree with you. At first, I thought people were asking me questions, but they were agreeing with me. Um, and uh, so after Arnie gave that, that uh, terrific speech. I was able, to, I was again trying to build off of that and also show these people some level of respect and I, I made the hand gesture um, basically asking to be recognized to, to have my opportunity to speak um, and uh, it seemed like it was received very positively and again just furtherance of that relationship we had establishing or expanding upon that foundation and then I basically said to them that I, you know, we're here to enforce our ordinance, our responsibility to do so. 11 o'clock is, is the time, and that time has passed, so I respectfully ask them to all vacate the park. And were you going to give them enough time to gather their stuff? Yes, I did tell them they had uh, um, belongings, um, and uh, 
I told you some people had packed up some stuff, but there was still stuff in the park. Uh, so I told them if they needed time, um, just let us know. We would definitely afford them the time to get their belongings because I had concerns about what was going to happen to that property if it was left there or unattended. Um, there was no way to, to guarantee that it would still be there or not damaged and stuff. So. We don't need it. Yes, I have. And what's that a video of? It's a video um, of me uh, walking up to the assembly, uh, the second assembly, uh, when Arnie Albert was speaking. And then um, I addressed the group after um, I was recognized by the group uh, to, to speak. And who videotaped this? It was videotaped uh, by Officer Lorenzo. And that's before you, before you pull just for, no, I think you can turn the. The shades will come down, and it might help you visualize the. Uh... I'm sorry. And uh, why was it? And he's part of the police department. He is. And why was the police department videotaping? Videotaping, so we had um, video, our own video of our enforcement action, any any criminal conduct that, that may be occurring or any violations of ordinance that may be occurring. Um, this came on the heels of uh, totally unrelated to Occupy uh, and these individuals. It, it came on the tail of, a, of another protest where um, people were videotaping um, others committing criminal acts. We were put in a situation where there was valuable video evidence that we didn't want to lose. and. Um, as a result, we see some cameras and, and just pursue, pursue uh, searches of them with search warrants. Um, I was hoping to avoid that type of situation. And if we had our own video, if I had, you know, it never happened here, but if something were to escalate, I wouldn't be in a situation where now I had to, you know, seize people's cameras if they had evidence of something that may have occurred. Uh, we would have our own video, and, and that wouldn't have been necessary. So that played a big part in the decision. seems it appears like Officer Lorenzo gets closer and you can hear better. At some points, you, yeah, you may want to turn the volume up because it's a little hard to hear at first. Thank you. 